Here is an example of linked objects, the rings of a chain. Consider just two of them. Sure, we cannot pull them apart without cutting them. We can color the rings as in a chord projection. Thanks to the coloring, even two-dimensional beings can understand that the rings are linked. Fix the color of a ring, say it is all green. Then, it crosses the other ring in a blue point and in a red point. Between blue and red, there must be some green points. So, we cannot pull the rings apart. Otherwise, for a moment they would intersect in points, which are green on both rings. Instead, to unlink the rings may look like this. They can be pulled apart, since they intersect always in points with different colors. In the same way, we, solid spacers, can understand some nothings in four dimensions. These two tubes are a projection of a four-dimensional tangle in three space. The colors encode the height in the fourth direction where the tubes intersect and have different colors. Since there is a circle of blue points here and a circle of red points here, there must be a circle of green points in the middle. So, we cannot pull the two tubes apart, since otherwise we would see intersections of green parts. Instead, these tubes are unlinked and we can pull them apart without changing the four-dimensional tangle. The points that coincide in the projection have always different colors. We can also vary the height of the tubes without changing the type of the knotting. Let's analyze better the representation of knotted surfaces. It is completely analogous to knots. The basic feature in knot diagrams is the crossing. In the projection, we see two arcs intersecting in a point. Whenever they intersect, they have different colors. Likewise, we allow projections of surfaces to intersect in three space, but only if they have different colors around the line of intersection. We will see soon that there are also more complicated intersections for surfaces. Similarly to broken arc diagrams, we may use the broken surface notation. We remove a small piece of the lower surface along the line of intersection. Sometimes we use both conventions together to help distinguish the broken surface parts. We are now ready to construct our first knotted sphere. It starts with a cup. A touch is a tube. It goes through itself, passing below in the fourth direction, and comes out, passing above. Then it continues in a symmetric way. It goes around itself, so that its first part passes through it. Finally, the tube is capped. We will show later that this sphere is truly knotted. To build a broken surface diagram, we remove the lower parts around the intersections. We may keep the colors to help visualize the surface, though they are not necessary, since relative four-dimensional height is encoded in broken parts. There are pieces of surface that we cannot see, since they are inside the tube. But the surface is symmetric, so we can cut it in half and see also the pieces inside. All the information about this sphere is also contained in this half diagram.
Some spheres may be much more complicated. It is not even easy to understand that this one is a sphere. The trick is to find a cup, attach a ring to it and move the ring along the surface. The ring spans the surface until it reaches the other end, where there is another cup. If a surface can be described in this way, it is a sphere. Also this sphere is symmetric, so again we can cut it in half. We can also convert the broken surface diagram to a colored projection, which carries the same information. We have already seen this drawing of a surface in 4 space projected to 3 space. Let's look at one line of double points. Locally, in a tangle, it looks like two disks intersecting in a line. The points where the surfaces intersect are called double points. So, this is a line of double points. Let's add another piece of surface at a different 4-dimensional height. Now, we see three lines of double points. They all intersect in one point. It is called a triple point, since three surfaces intersect there. Let's add a fourth piece to our tangle. It passes through the triple point, making it a quadruple point. We see the same lines of double points as before, and three more lines. All of them are intersecting in the quadruple point. But quadruple points can be avoided in the projections without changing the type of the knotted surface. By a slight deformation, we turn it into four triple points. There is a further singularity that cannot be avoided. It is made by a piece of the surface that intersects itself in a line of double points, which has an end point. This end point is called branch point. Here is a way to visualize its construction. Consider a segment which is a slice of the surface in the tangle. We can push it along the surface to sweep it. Its center is always on the line of double points. The branch point is created when the segment changes direction of movement. The segment changes color during the movement, meaning that it is at different heights in the fourth coordinate. To sum up, in three-dimensional projections of knotted surfaces, we see lines of double points, isolated triple points, and isolated branch points. In the following, we will mainly consider double points. Recall what we know about knot diagrams. We need to use crossings to describe knots, while we can avoid all other singularities in the projections. From the simplest singularities, we can derive the Rademeister moves. There are two ways of resolving each singularity to get a legitimate diagram. These two ways are the sides of the move. 
A similar situation is true for surfaces. In a surface diagram, we need lines of double points, triple points and branch points. And we can avoid all other singularities. Here we show just four of them. Also in this case, we can use the simplest singularities to derive moves for surface diagrams. Here is an example. A piece of surface intersects another one in only one point. We can pull the surfaces apart so that they do not intersect at all. Or we can push one through the other so that they intersect in a whole circle of points. These two surface tangles can replace each other without changing the type of knotted surface in four space. The same move may appear rotated or reflected. This is the first of the so-called Rosman moves, the analogs of the Reitemeister moves. Here is another move. The yellow surface is a saddle, just like a mountain pass. The mountain pass can be below the blue surface or above it. This is the second of the Rosman moves. Here is a last example that we have in part already seen. A point where four surfaces intersect is not allowed. Two ways of resolving it consist in pushing a piece of the surface, say the yellow one, in either direction. This move is called Rosman move 7. We will not go into detail about the four remaining moves, which involve branch points and triple points. These moves are named after Dennis Rosman, who proved that they are sufficient to describe motions of surfaces in four space that do not change the type of the knotting. We can use the Rosman moves to show that this sphere is unknotted. It looks very similar to a sphere which we have already seen. But the color information is different. In fact, we will show later that the sphere on the right is knotted. We can use Rosman Move 2 to push the blue tube partly through the red one, joining two circles of double points. Look inside the tube. Here, we can use Rosman Move 1 to remove the circle of double points. The blue tube can now be shortened and passed through the green part using Rosman Move 1 again. Lastly, we use Rosman Move 1 yet another time. The sphere is now clearly unknotted. Recall the rule to three color knot diagrams. We color arcs such that at its crossing we see all three colors or just one color. This rule can be translated almost literally to broken surface diagrams. We color the pieces of the surface such that at each line of double points we see all the three colors. 
or just one color. The forbidden situation is when we have exactly two colors around the line of double points. The unknotted sphere can only be colored in the three trivial ways. Like in the case of knots, three colorability is interesting because it behaves well with respect to Rosman moves. In fact, three colorability of a broken surface diagram does not change under Rosman moves. Let's check it on some of the moves. Here is Rosman move 1. There are two cases on the left. The pieces can have different colors or the same color. In both cases, we find a corresponding three coloring on the right. Vice versa, for any three coloring on the right, we can find a corresponding three coloring on the left. Going from one side to the other and back, we find the same three coloring we started with. This means that the two sides have the same number of three colorings. Let's check just another move, Rosman move 2. Again, any three coloring on one side defines a unique three coloring on the other side. A similar check can be performed on each one of the seven Rosman moves. The number of recordings is the same on the two sides of the moves. This number is then a property of the knotted surfaces and does not depend on the broken surface diagrams chosen to represent them. Recall these two surfaces. Using three colorability, we can now prove that the one on the right hand side is truly knotted. We need to use a broken surface diagram. We cut it in half to see also the small pieces inside the tube. Here is a three coloring that uses all the three colors. Then this surface has at least four three colorings, since we could also paint it completely pink, purple or pale blue. By the way, it has nine three colorings. Can you find them all? The unknotted sphere has three three colorings, so the two spheres are knotted in different ways. We have a proof that there exists at least one truly knotted sphere.